Good morning, everyone. In today's episode, we're gonna fix this Haas vector drive, and we're gonna actually do it far more affordably than dealing with your HFO or Haas directly. Welcome back to the channel. So this is my little Haas VF2 SS. It's uh, basically one of the most common machines out there. Uh, I think it's Haas' most popular machine. They sell the most of them. So this video will be help hopefully a lot of people. Um, also, the vector drives in these machines are literally the same for all of my machines. So these this procedure will actually uh, help you most likely if you own any Haas product, because I believe most of the vector drives are the same across all of their line of machines, besides maybe some of the bigger horsepower stuff like the 50 taper, taper machines. You guys remember from one of my last videos, I had this machine basically staying on all the time because I wasn't sure if it would start back up because when you first start it up, it gets a uh, power supply fault. Um, you can sometimes get it to fire up if you turn it off and back on again, but it's not very reliable. Uh, problem is we recently had a power outage here and the machine turned off. so. Um, I could probably get it back up and going, but I think I've got some big jobs coming up. So I think it's probably better to just get this thing fixed and back to being reliable. So the first thing we're going to do here is fire this thing up and we are going to document the, uh, the codes, the error codes on here, uh, just so that we have them for information. So let's get this thing fired up and we'll look at that. Okay. So we have a bunch of error codes here. Um, service turn off is obviously just because we haven't, we haven't reset the machine. Uh, and it won't reset because there's all sorts of other active alarms here. So uh, we've got, let's see here, uh, TT access drive fault. This is mostly likely due to the power supply issue. So that's probably not an actual issue. Um, Z axis drive fault, Y axis drive. So all those are related to uh, the, the power supply issue. This is where we start to get uh, what we're, we're needing to find out here. So we have a 648 DC bus shorted. So this is the DC bus in the power supply itself, the vector drive. Um, so this is uh, one of the codes that we're gonna have to pay attention to. Low incoming AC line voltage, this is not true because I've checked it and it's correct. Um, so this is another, again, another problem with the, uh, the vector drive. Um, and then it says the opposite here. So, so these are all vector drive issues. Um, I'm gonna write these down just so I have them for the, the people that are gonna fix this thing. So um, I'm gonna get those documented and then we'll start showing you how to turn into this thing. Okay, so I've got all those written down. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn this machine off. We're gonna turn off the breaker in the back and we're gonna come over here and we're gonna turn off uh wrong one there we go we're gonna turn off the main breaker here now if you have some sort of lockout tag out procedure this is the time you would want to lock out tag out that machine make sure nobody can turn it on while you're working on it uh it's only me here in the shop so i'm not super worried about that because if i turn it on on myself i'm the retard and i deserve to die anyway um, <laughs> Uh, so let's get into the back of this machine and we'll start showing you what's going on here. Okay, so I'm here at the back of the machine. Uh, the tools I have for this is just a standard screwdriver. Uh, I've got a nut driver, a, an ex extension with a Phillips, and I've got an extra extension with a 532nd Allen wrench. Uh, you can also just use hand tools. I just find this quicker and easier. Um, so let's get into the back of this thing. Uh, all I need to do is open these two quarter turn screws. I don't have this cabinet locked because, like I said, it's only me here, so um, no big deal. Uh, so these are just quarter turn, and if your cabinet is locked, unlock it, and then it should open. So I've given this machine a little bit of time to discharge, a few minutes here. Um, here's the important thing. Right here on the vector drive, it says, light must be out before replacing drive. So this is a little LED, and its purpose is to uh, basically use up some power and discharge the capacitors that are in the drive. Um, if that is on and you go start trying to touch terminals, uh, you could get a pretty bad shock or, uh, you know, possibly get killed. So you want to make sure that's off. Um, that's, a, that's a must. So make sure that light is discharged. Very important. So down under this vector drive, there's a bunch of connections. Uh, this stuff's all labeled pretty well. Um, makes, makes pretty good sense. So it's pretty difficult to confuse where everything goes. Um, and the wires kind of have some stiffness. So I haven't had any real issues with, uh, you know, confusing where things go. Um, all my machines seem to be labeled quite well, so not a huge deal there. Uh, so we have to disconnect all these connections and these two little plugs. These ones are easy. They're just a little tiny clip on here. Push it with your finger and they slide right out. So we'll just move those out of the way. And then this one's got a little bigger clip. Just be gentle with these. Make sure you don't bend any pins or anything. And then we have a little plastic cover here. So this little cover just pops off. And we'll just set that out of the way. I like to set all my parts in the bottom of the cabinet here. Uh, just because it's easy to not lose them. So now we just need to take off all these these uh, connectors here, these little terminals. Um, so that's just a Phillips. However, these screws are pretty soft in my experience, so I like to loosen them all with that, that standard screwdriver first. So 
now that I've gotten those all loose, I'm just gonna zip all these out with this uh, Phillips and the screw gun. So I like to just pull these terminals all the way off and just set them in the bottom of the machine. Okay, all the terminals are unscrewed. Everything's loose, everything's out of the way. Um, if you want, before you unscrew these, you can take a picture of this so you can, or a couple of pictures from different angles maybe, make sure that you have it uh, documented pretty well where everything goes. But like I said, everything is labeled. Everything's got like A goes to A, uh, B goes to B, you know, so on and so forth. So uh, everything's everything's labeled pretty well. Um, so not, not a huge deal there. So everything's unhooked. Now all we have to do is get to these little 5 30 seconds Allens, which are pretty deep back in here. And that's why I have that extra extension on that rattle gun. So here's my setup for that. A couple of extensions stacked with that 5 30 seconds Allen. Um, so I can reach all the way in. You can see how that uses up almost that whole length to get back to those screws. So with these mounting screws, you don't have to pull them all the way, all the way out. You just have to loosen them a couple turns. Uh, they're a little tight to get to in some of these places with wires in the way, but pretty simple. So that's the screws loose. And if you notice in the sheet metal here, there's like slots. So basically these are just hangers um, and they all have slots on the bottom. So all you have to do is loosen the screws and then just lift the vector drive up and it should come out. That's the vector drive out. Um, they are a little heavy, so be careful uh, picking them up and getting them out of there. Uh, but yeah, no big deal. Pretty straightforward. Uh, let's get this thing boxed up and ready to ship. All right, so as these uh, vector drives are pretty darn expensive to replace, I'm gonna take some extra time and really pack this thing super good, padding all the way around it and uh, get it boxed up really, really well. This is gonna be going to uh, Wes over at CNC Wise. Um, I've fixed four or five of these vector drives now or had them fixed and uh, Wes has been the most reliable and the most affordable to use. So I'll put his uh, business information down in the description below. They're over in Colorado. So uh, hopefully he can help you guys out if you need it. Um, uh, let me finish getting this thing boxed up and we'll get it out of here. All right, now that we got this vector drive boxed up all nicely and ready to ship, let's get it over to Wes at CNC Wise, let him work his magic and uh, get us back up and running. Here you go, Wes. Wes here with CNC Wise. We are your expert source for Haas vector drive repair located in Denver, Colorado. And today we're gonna to show you a before and after test on this repair service. What we're gonna show you here is the low voltage alarm that this drive generates. On power up, it's supposed to get to 335 volts and you should hear a relay click and this one does not do it. As you can see, it only generated about 80 volts DC. So what we're showing you here is the test after the repair. Uh, you'll notice the DC bus gets up on initial power up. After that initial three seconds, you hear the relay click, and now it's up to proper DC bus voltage. So now that the repair is complete and the testing went well, we're gonna send this back to Justin so he can reinstall it. Uh, you can get our contact info in the video description. You can give us a call or an email for a quote. Here you go, Justin. Thanks, Wes. All right, guys, let's get into this box, see what we got. Ooh, nice clean vector drive. All right, I'm gonna get this unpacked and we'll start getting it in the machine. All right guys, so reinstalling this thing is very simply the reverse order of taking it out. Uh, it takes no time at all, so let's get it done. So I didn't notice at first, but I have a little bent corner here from shipping that uh, is keeping me from installing that. So I'm gonna straighten that out and then I'll get it in. So these vice gripping uh, crescent wrenches are, are great for stuff like this.
fixed. So now we just hook all these back up where they go. So these are self-explanatory. These are the two plugs that go there uh, and all the rest of these are labeled. So we have basically like that, those three in a line, the two grounds, main grounds, green ones obviously, and then we'll figure out our ABCs over here. So those get double stacked, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Let me get that done. All right, so as mentioned before, these screws are pretty soft, so I didn't send them with the rattle gun. I'm gonna go back through and tighten them up with just a flat head, just to make sure they're snug. All right, so there we go. Everything is back the way it was when it started. Last thing to do is these two little plugs. Careful not to bend any pins. gentle on those guys so that's it all reinstalled all right hi pickle hi bud all right so let's go around here oh gotta turn on the breaker don't recommend doing that without the cabinet closed but you know me oh i think my main breaker is still off yep All right, so let's see if we get any alarms. Hey, look at that. Just the servos off, boom, ready to roll. Sweet, so this guy is fixed. What are you doing? All right. So there you go, all good to go. All buttoned up. If you're curious about the knife, it's a Kaiser uh, club foot, or I don't remember what it's called. Sheep's foot, I think is what it's called. Um, sheep's foot blade, uh, kind of a cool knife. Pretty cheap, works good, stays sharp. So there we go, we're ready to make parts. So that's it for today, guys. Um, this guy is back up and running. I'm gonna get, get going making some uh, head flanges on that thing, because that's the one I keep the steel and stainless in. Uh, this one I keep, try to keep mainly for aluminum. Um, but ready to go. Uh, all total, that cost me like 1,450 bucks after shipping. Uh, so I think a, I need, think a new vector drive is like 7,500 or something. Um, so pretty good cost savings there. Not very hard to do. Uh, I think your price might vary depending on what's wrong with the vector drive. But uh, yeah, so that's about it. I will put CNC zones uh, information in the in the description down below, uh, so you guys can get a hold of them. Uh, good guys to work with, Wes over there. Um, so that's about it for this one. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.